putting a sensor right below a potential leak location, which in all fairness, seems like the perfect place, is actually a terrible idea. First off, most sensors on the market are not waterproof. You see, most water alarms have a speaker feature, which requires some opening on the device to set off the alarm at whatever maximum volume they can emit. Most of us customers appreciate a louder sound to grab our attention as soon as a leak starts. Unfortunately, holes also provide easy access for water to make its way into the electronics powering the speaker. Assume whatever sensor you are considering is not waterproof unless the product page clearly advertises it. We all know when water meets electronics, that is a death sentence for devices. So let's not do that. Assume whatever sensor you are considering is not waterproof, unless the product page clearly advertises it. If you have to ask, it's not waterproof. Even if it is advertised as waterproof, placing this IP66 waterproof rated device right under a potential leak is not a good idea. When I tested these Gobi sensors for another video, leaving the water on top of it for an extended period of time allowed water to get inside, which then going. triggered the alarm to continue going off even after right. I dried all of the external sensors both on the top and on the bottom. Maybe. Nope. But moving a sensor just out of range still isn't the best option. Let's consider most of the places you want to have a sensor have more than one possible leak point. Under sink, for instance, we have three points of potential leaks, the two supply lines and the P-trap. We don't want to use three sensors when one will do. Now you might think putting a sensor right in the middle is a good idea, and it certainly is better than putting it right under one of the three and then correctly guessing which leaks first. Instead, we need to apply another lesson from when I leak tested three of the major undersink mats on the market in three different sink cabinets. Cabinets are not level. Throw in a lesson on how water runs downhill and now we have a winning answer on where to put the leak sensor. We actually need to make sure that the sensor is downhill from all three of the leak points so that we don't miss a leak. I know in this cabinet on this mat, all the water pools to the front left. In this spot, if a leak forms at the P-trap and I put the sensor here in the middle, I have to wait for water to build back up to the sensor. So I'll put it back here. Now you may have two more questions. The first one being, what are these under sink mats that I speak of and which is the best one? That video is right here. Or maybe you're asking how to choose the best leak sensor. There are a lot of different features and it's important to figure out which features are the most important for your situation. That video will come out after I finish testing these Gobi leak sensors, and I will put it right here. See you there.